Hello there. Welcome back to uh, one of our favorite construction games, Construct That Triangle. Um, this is the fourth uh, construction. Uh, angle, angle, side, also known as side, angle, angle. Basically, we're given two angles and a side, but the side is not between or included uh, between the two angles. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly trickier construction, not because we don't have enough pieces, but because one of the pieces that we need to build a segment or array uh, is not given to us immediately. And we're going to have to get a little bit sneaky about how we find that piece. But that's okay. Uh, we can do it. Let's go ahead and jump into this construction. Um, as with uh, the other constructions, we need a, something to build our construction on. So we're going to go ahead and grab our straight edge right away and use it to build a line or a line segment or array, uh, however you want to start off. I have a line here, just kind of to show it goes on uh, with the arrows on the end. Um, there she is. And the one thing that's a little different from the previous three constructions, though, is that instead of just going ahead and using a, the endpoint of the ray or line, I guess line wouldn't have an endpoint, but a line segment uh, for a vertex, um, I pick it up interior point. I pick a point inside on the line. Now, that, that may not seem like it makes a lot of sense right now, but we're going to get to a point here in just a, a minute where that's going to make a lot more sense. So hang in there and just understand that that's our first... Uh, our first goal is to draw a straight line uh, and pick a point inside. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go grab our one line segment. They gave us one line segment. And we're going to use our compass to spin around and measure the distance of that segment. Length appears to be right about that. So we'll come back over, drop down to the point we chose to be our vertex. Remember, the point I picked is just arbitrary. I just picked this point right here. It was on the line, not on the end. And uh, that's really all there was to it. Here is the length of QR. Okay. Next up, we need to start talking about these angles a little bit. Um, Step three says, from the appropriate endpoint of the segment, duplicate the given angle whose vertex is also an endpoint of the line segment. Now, my two endpoints of the line segment I just copied were Q and R. And I think what uh, is important to realize is that we don't have an angle R. The angles we're given are P and Q. And, uh, Q. So we need to use Q as our primary vertex here, knowing that angle R is something we haven't found yet. And when I remember uh, earlier I mentioned this is a slightly sneaky uh, construction. Well, this is why. It's because we don't have angle R yet. We're going to have to kind of figure that out as we go through. Um, but we now have... Uh, we now have... Uh, vertex Q labeled, we can go ahead over to angle Q and proceed to make an arc through our angle so that we can duplicate our angle there. Um, while I have this length, I'm just going to go ahead and come over to my other angle and make that same arc through there. I'm going to have to eventually measure angle P uh, coming up here, actually next, and so I'm going to use that, that arc length right there, and then coming back over to our construction, I'm actually going to go all the way around with this arc length. Once again, may not make a lot of sense right now, but if you hang in there, this will make more sense in a second. Okay, we go back to um, go back to our angle Q. We've created these two reference points where our arc intersected the sides of the angle, I need to figure out how far apart those two reference points are. So, there we go. 
we have, and once again, when I say reference point, that's just where the arc intersects the side of the angle. So that would be one of them right there. And the other one right there. Okay. So um, now that I have that distance measured on the compass, let's go back over to our reference point that we marked right here. That's where the arc intersects our original line. And we're going to come up and arc through the first arc to create that same exact distance. So now when I draw this ray, we have duplicated the exact measurement of angle Q. And, you know, if we really wanted to, we could kind of confirm to ourselves that we got a pretty good copy on that. Here's the angle Q, as far as we, uh, we see it. If I drag this over and place it on our copy of angle Q, you can see that we have a very nice fit. Um, this is where this construction gets interesting right now. Because all I have left, all, the only piece I have left is angle P. But angle P doesn't start from the only other point I have, which is... Uh, vertex R. We'll go ahead and throw a point there right now so you can see those are the two points of the triangle we have so far, the two vertices. And um, our, uh, our angle uh, P is not supposed to start at vertex R. They just, it doesn't make sense. Um, now, I know that angle P has to be somewhere along this ray. This is one of the angles in our triangle, but we don't know where. And what am I going to do? Just keep guessing, guessing, guessing until and then copy an angle P over and over again until I get lucky and it goes down and hits angle R, that would be maddening. So here's the trick. Here's the whole point uh, behind this construction that makes it work. We are now going to go ahead and copy angle P, but we're not going to do it at vertex R. We're going to copy it on top of the ray that we just created that created angle Q using the same vertex uh, that which would be Q, and the newly constructed ray on the first angle duplicate the second angle, angle P, on top of that uh, ray. The remaining angle between the newest ray and the original line, which is going to be the angle that we're going to we're going to find kind of over in this area here. That's going to be the missing angle R that we're looking for. How do we know that? Well, it's a, it's a mathematical argument. There's 180 degrees in, the argu in, a, in a triangle. There's also 180 degrees along a straight line. So that's kind of how that works. But anyway, let's go over here and measure the distance between these two points on, on, uh, on angle P. Well, we almost have it. There we go. Got it there. And we're going to come back over here. Remember, this is where I'm starting from. Um, not, not from the original line, but from the ray that I just constructed that angle on. And that's the arc distance that I was needing to find. And here comes another ray from vertex Q through our new point. And here's basically what we have going on. We have angle Q constructed here. This is angle Q. We have angle R, or I'm sorry, angle P. That was the only other angle they gave us. Angle P right here. So that means that the remaining angle, what's left over for us, has to be angle R. Now, once again, one last, one last explanation on this. How do I know this? Because the three angles of a triangle must add up to 180. Uh, that's the triangle sum conjecture or triangle sum theorem in our book. Uh, every book has some version of that. But a straight line, we know, also, also known as a straight angle, is also 180 degrees. So if Q plus P plus R have to add up to 180, whether they're in a triangle or on a line, then this angle right here, let's go ahead and outline that just to make sure we're clear what angle we're talking about. This angle, angle R, has to be the missing angle in the triangle. And I know where it goes. That angle 
has to be moved over here to vertex R if I'm going to figure out where we intersect uh, the, uh, the ray. So that's the idea of behind this last step is we have to copy angle R at vertex R until, and then uh, you know draw that ray until it intersects our original ray that we used to copy angle Q, which was right here. That's the idea. So let's clean this up just a little bit and we'll go back to work, okay? We'll get rid of our highlight, we'll get rid of our, our little vertices going there. Um, I'm gonna go over and make sure that I get the right distance between the vertex Q and the arc that we had originally used to do all these duplications on. Looks like that's about right. Very nice. I now move that over to vertex R because that's where we want to build this angle and make that nice long arc. Okay. Then we come over and figure out how far apart these arc intersection points are. Uh, that looks pretty good right there. We come back over and... Sorry about that. That's my bad. I need to go from the arc reference point. That looks a lot better. And here we go. We just found the missing uh, angle copy point where those arcs intersect. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a tiny little dot there just so that we're clear what, what we're looking at right there. Okay, that's the point that we want to go through. So here comes my ray coming from vertex R through that point that copies angle R from the other side of the, the line to the vertex where we wanted it to be. Uh, so basically this angle that I was trying to copy right here, we were able to do so by copying it right here okay um this uh point where the two rays intersect becomes our missing vertex which we know is a uh, vertex p and it's uh, a little bit more work than the other constructions no doubt about it but the final product right here is angle p r q and so that last step was once we found the remaining angle R, we needed to copy it over onto the endpoint R. Going back to the unused endpoint on our line segment, we copied the third angle that we found in step four. Um, we uh, extended the ray until it intersected the, the original angle that we copied, which showed us where our missing vertex was. And because angle side side, or, or I'm sorry, angle angle side, uh, proves triangle congruency. This triangle is the only possible triangle you could get from this construction. Uh, appreciate your patience. This was a long. Uh, this was a long construction. I hope um, I gave you some some points on why we're doing what we're doing, and uh, it makes a little bit more sense to you. Um, good luck with your uh, with your triangles.